Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Woo. My name is Song Yu, pastor here at Southern United Methodist Church. We welcome you all. It is great to be back to the house of the Lord to honor our Lord's Day together. Uh, Solely Youth Fundraiser. Uh, this Saturday, September 19th, a youth group will host a yard sale. You can see the address on the screen. It's a great time to come out and get a good deal and support our youth ministry. If you have any questions, please contact our brother Paul. New small group. We are forming a new small group for singles to do life together. If you are single, divorced, or widowed, uh, this will be a great opportunity for you to form a friendship with other believers and share your life with others. Uh, this is a great opportunity, especially during the pandemic. It can be a very lonely time. So this opportunity is given to you. Please pray about this. If you have any questions, please talk to our sister Dawn. She will guide you on this. We continue with our new sermon series, Contagion and Cure. Yeah. It's time to process what we have been through under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We have been so hectic with our life schedule, right? It's time to take a pause and try to bring our experiences and pandemic trauma into a perspective with the help of the Holy Spirit. Online worshipers, there is a function called the closed captioning on YouTube uh, channel. It, it may help you to follow the service today. Uh, one last uh, announcement. This week we have uh, several community meetings, admin council meeting tomorrow uh, evening at 7 o'clock here at the Fellowship Hall. And nomination committee will meet through Zoom this Tuesday evening. An annual conference will take place this Saturday at 9 a.m. So it is time for us to pray for our church and God's movement in our midst. Also, we pray for our annual conference. Our leaders will uh, discern the will of God together. All right. Shall we take a moment to send ourselves on the presence of God? And I will lead the opening prayer as we worship our Lord. Lord, the host of worship, the creator, the redeemer, the sustainer. We come before your presence with desire to experience and encounter you as we worship you and praise your name. Help us to open our hearts, cast all the burdens and anxiety before you, and ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, who is hovering above and around us, bringing a sense of renewal and revival and rejuvenation through your powerful presence in our midst. We are physically apart from each other, but we're spiritually connected, more connected to each other through your presence. Our Lord said, when two or three are gathering in his name, you will be there among them. We pray for your powerful presence. Visit us, Lord. This time of worship, so that we may get recharged, refreshed, and get ready to face another week with courage and hope and trust in you. All for your glory, for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. It's time for opening him. Please remain seated. We're going to hum the praise together.
Put your hand in the air if you are a perfect child. If you never get into trouble, if you've never done anything wrong, if you've never disobeyed mom and dad, put your hand up. Mm. Not one. Okay, huh? Well, I want to thank you for your honesty. It's just human nature, isn't it, to sometimes do something wrong? None of us are perfect, are we? Let me ask all the adults, shall I? Are any of you guys perfect? See? The adults aren't perfect either. So, if you're not perfect, I'm sure that means you've probably been in trouble a few times, haven't you? Maybe you even have to do something we call a timeout, right? Have any of you guys ever been put in a timeout? Well, maybe you have to sit in a special chair or at the bottom step of the stairs. Maybe you even have to go to your room. Do any of you guys have to do that sometimes? I'm going to tell you guys a story about a man named Jonah who disobeyed God and didn't do what God asked him to do. Does anyone remember what happened to him? That's right. Jonah was swallowed up by a big fish and was stuck inside that fish for three whole days. Did you ever consider that God may have been putting Jonah in a timeout? The reason we get put into a timeout when we don't behave properly or we're in trouble for doing something wrong is so that we have time to really think about what we did. Sometimes, mom or dad, or maybe even your teacher might say, you need to think about what you just did. Or perhaps they'll say, you need to think about how sorry you are. And that's why they send us off to a timeout, so that we have time to think about the way we behaved. Now, just as I said before, your timeout might be on a chair, or a step, or a carpet, or even perhaps in the corner. And you probably only have to spend two or three minutes there, maybe a few more. But Jonah upset God so much by disobeying him that he had to spend three whole days inside the tummy of that big fish. I'm sure it was very nasty in there. But Jonah didn't just sit in that fish doing nothing. He took the time to think about what he had done. And he decided to pray to God. He thanked God for all that he had done for him and for saving him when he was drowning and he praised God. I don't think any of you guys are going to end up inside the belly of a big fish for three days to do a timeout. But if you end up on the naughty chair or get sent to your room for a few minutes to think about what you did, I want you to use that time wisely. Do what Jonah did. Talk to God. Say your prayers. Tell him how thankful you are for everything he does for you. And ask him to help you to behave better next time. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us and caring for us so much. Help us to take time out of our day to remember you and all that you do for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have some prayers and praises this morning. We want to lift up Noreen Hitchstein. And she's recovering from complications from a tooth extraction. Katie Mills, great aunt. Uh, she's home and she's recovering from her health issue. Also, we want to pray special prayers for Vicki Runyon. She's our uh, coordinator for the uh, nursery here. She uh, had surgery this week and is continuing to recover. And um, it, the surgery went well, her husband said it, but she'll start treatments very soon for cancer. I'd like to have special prayers for our students, our children, our parents, and our teachers, uh, all levels preschool all the way up. This week was a challenging week. It was a new week for many of them, and there was a lot of emotion. So uh, special prayers for these, these folks trying to get through this. Uh, prayer request for uh, Joanne Lumford, as she's battling uh, bacterial pneumonia. Also Bobby Wilhelm, she fell and uh, broke her leg. But let's have a joy. Let's have a joy this morning that we're in fall, and fall is a beautiful time. Uh, the Lord paints his canvas on those trees. It's a gorgeous time. So uh, remember the joys this week. Let's bow our heads and take this to God in prayer. Dear God, the fall is a change of season. That change, let's pray for peace that surpasses all understanding during this time. Many of us have worries and pains on our hearts. Remind us that you carry our burdens. 
We pray for those who are sick and need your healing touch. We continue to pray for those on the front lines, those in, the, in the harm's way. These front lines are continuing to change, and we pray and lift and protect those. We pray for our church, for our country, our leaders, and our brothers and sisters around the world. We ask that you touch the lives of those who have not felt your love and bring you to Christ. We take all this to you in a prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning, we have two passages. First, Leviticus 15, 31. Thus you shall keep the people of Israel separate from their uncleanliness, so that they do not die in their uncleanliness by defiling my tabernacle that is in their midst. Also, John 3, 14 through 15. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks to you, God. God. Uh, on a weekly basis, we have this moment and to bless our offering. Uh, thanks to your generous and sacrificial offering, we continue to carry on the kingdom movement and together. Uh, if you bring your offering, uh, you can drop off your offering on the offering plate found near the exit door as you leave the sanctuary today. And we will collect it from there. Uh, shall we pray to God? Lord, you are the ultimate gift giver, the ultimate owner and author of our life. We used to take things for granted for a long time without recognizing or acknowledging your ultimate authority over our lives. Now, Lord, we come back to you with humility and repentance. We desire to live our life according to your plan and purpose so that we may bring glory and honor to your name and enjoy the deep sense of fulfillment and joy that comes from you. Whatever this offering is used, let your glory be manifest. The love of Christ we experience and celebrate in multiple tangible ways. All for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Moving fast. <laughs> We've been facing the unprecedented crisis of the pandemic, which has been threatening our entire humankind. Every corner of the entire global community has been affected by this highly contagious and deadly virus. What's worse, the spread of fear and anxiety has been more harmful than the spread of the virus. Do you remember what happened at the Beginning of this whole pandemic, panic bomb. Ah, it was a huge issue. People said it was not a supply issue, it was a demand issue. Empty shelves at the grocery store triggered more panic buying. And what's up with the toilet paper? Do you remember? That? <laughs> <laughs> and nowadays, if you can see it, I feel like urged to buy it. I'm like, why? Why do I do that? But I still cannot wrap my mind around our obsession with toilet papers. <laughs> Buy spam instead of it. Gun sale went up. You gotta do what you gotta do, no question about it. But it exposed what we got. We are prone to do when we are driven by 
fear. Uh, it has been reported that there has been a surge of substance abuse, mental disorder, domestic violence, and sexual abuse during the lockdown. Heartbreaking reality we face. When we are pushed to the edge, our raw and ugly dark side comes out to the surface and plagues our life. And we just confront how evil we can be or ugly we can be. The book of Leviticus in the Old Testament deals with the issue of contagion through the physical contact. Basically, whoever touches something unclean becomes unclean and thus has to go through purification process according to the law of God, thus called purity law. Purity law was commanded of God given to the ancient Israelites in the wilderness through Moses. According to God's mysterious provision, God led the Israelites to Mount Sinai, known as the Mountain of God, and gave special instructions on how to become God's chosen people. And God said this in Leviticus 15, 31. Thus you shall keep the people of Israel separate from their uncleanness, so that they do not die in their uncleanness by defiling my tabernacle that is in their midst. Purity law primarily addresses a religious matter on their relationship between God and God's people, right? How to keep their spiritual purity and innocence before God as God's chosen people as they travel through the wilderness. And at the same time, it provides a practical tips to stay healthy. Ah, interestingly, God provided divine guidelines for them to become God's own people, holy nation, at the same time try to help them to stay healthy throughout their journey in the wilderness, where they were virtually exposed to all kinds of diseases and illnesses. So for the ancient Israelites, obeying the word of God was literally directly related to keeping their life healthy and safe. Very interesting, isn't it? Ah, trying to keep the spiritual purity and innocence before God was directly connected to keeping their physical health. We are living under the constant real threat of the deadly contagion. And we're trying to figure out the best practices for avoiding it, slowing down the infection as much as we can. And we're extremely vulnerable and concerned over our physical health. There is a question for you. What about our spiritual health? What about the spiritual contagion that is spreading even without our awareness in our lives? Do we make any intentional efforts to stop or block the spread of the deadly contagion of sin and death and immorality in our lives? How can we flatten the curve and heal the sick Infected of the deadly virus of sin. Okay, Pastor, tell me about it. Okay, here are three best practices, right? All right, anybody? Okay, okay. <laughs> Number one, <laughs> plain defense, physical distancing. Ah. Do not mingle with people who don't bother to commit a sin without a sense of guilt or shame. Let's say you have an issue with the drinking and DUI, right? Still hang out with people who love to drink outside together. Then you've got to do something on your part. What is it? To physically distance yourself from the harming, soul damaging relationships. So this is time for you to take a moment to examine yourself, a group of people you hang out with. If that relationship is disrupted in your soul and breaking your marriage, your family, whoa, you've got to take a step. You've got to take a decisive move on your part with the help of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 4.14 says, Do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not walk in the way of the evil doors. Avoid it. Do not go on it. 
turn away from it, and pass on. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from every form of evil. Ah. Physical distancing is also quite a spiritual practice. So whenever you walk around and you are reminded of the social distancing, immediately think of the spiritual meaning of that physical distancing in your life. Is there any harmful relationship you need to uh, break out of out? All right, ready for number two? So far, so good. Everybody stay away. Very good. <laughs> number two, playing offense. Strengthening your immune system. Uh, nowadays, we often hear the term immunocompromised, which simply means having an impaired immune system and referring to people at higher risk. So in addition to the passive defense of social distancing and lockdown, there is an active protection against the contagion of sin and death, which is the enhanced, it boosts our spiritual and physical immune system. For boosting our immune system, what do we do? Three key practices, right? Healthy diet, oh, ha, oh, oh, gotta consume lots of vitamin C. Eh, not so much of fried chicken. I, I need it, want it, but <laughs> vitamin C, right? Healthy daily cycle, whether sufficient sleep, beauty sleep matters. You can have this skin when you have sleep well. <laughs> Never mind, okay. Daily exercise. Ah, you gotta build muscles and stamina. And through my recent United Methodist Men's Gathering, to learn about dementia, I learned that the combination of these key practices also works really effectively for fighting dementia and cognitive impairment. In the same way, when we deal with the deadly contagion of sin, we should enhance our spiritual immune system by taking lots of spiritual vitamin C. Where do we do that? By reading and meditating on the Word of God, spiritual vitamins right here. Ah. And they keep being healthy daily and weekly cycle. How? By having daily devotional prayer time with God and keeping the Lord's Day holy like today on a weekly basis. And building spiritual muscles and stamina. How do we do that? By participating in ministries and missions and work together and having a group a band of believers on your side as a prayer circle of protection. First Timothy 4 7 says, Train yourself in godliness, for while physical training is of some value, godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for both the present life and the life. To come. Shall we boost our spiritual immune system so that we may shift from being immunocompromised to being immunouncompromised in the Lord? One of the challenges we faced as a nation during the virus outbreak was lack of PPE. Do you remember that? Personal protective equipment such as gloves and masks and goggles, especially for our healthcare workers. It made me wonder about the spiritual PPE. What do we need in order to face the giants in our spiritual battles every day? And thankfully, the Bible provides a list of spiritual PPE. Ephesians 6 says, verse 10 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord, in the strength of His power. The Bible doesn't say that be strong in your wisdom, your insights, your career, your education, your wealth and health. No. Be strong in whom? In the Lord, in the strength of His power. Put on the whole armor of God. The divine armor? Why do we need that? Isn't the human armor just sufficient enough? No. Why do we need divine armor? 
Verse 12 says, For a struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Did you hear what the Bible says? The battle we face, we struggle with in our daily life is not against the people we see and touch and experience, interact with. Oh, much more than that, a battle is against the cosmic power, the darkness. Woo! Human help, human weapon, ammunition is no worth for this battle. Then what do we need? Okay, verse 13, therefore, Take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day. And having done everything to stand for, stand therefore, fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Ah, first item about PPE, right? Belt of truth. Do not be swayed by lies or falsities out there. Stand to the truth spoken written in the Bible for you and me. Ah, and then what? Put on the breastplate of righteousness. You've got to protect your heart with the righteousness of God. And as the shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Ah, and then with all of these, take the shield of faith to protect right up flaming arrows from the evil one. And Take the helmet of salvation. Uh, you identify yourself as a redeemed child of God. You go to the spiritual battle as a saved child of God in the name of Jesus. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Active, sharper than any two edged sword. You hold the sword of the Spirit in your hand. And we go to spiritual battles every day. Don't we all need the divine armor in our lives to face the giants? I do. Every hour I need divine armor and the spiritual PPE. Are you fully equipped? If you experience and shortage of your spiritual PPE, what do you need to do? For yourself, for your child, your spouse, your family, your marriage, what do you need to do? Ah, the spiritual surgeon will shout at me. What are you waiting for, soldier? When you recognize the need, what do you need to do, right? Uh, don't wait. Dive into it. Secure and take the spiritual PPE. Number three. Ready? Very good. Most importantly, take the divine vaccine. Ah. One main reason why we are so vulnerable about this coronavirus is because it is novel and brand new and unknown to us. Experts are still trying to figure out and understand how this virus works and they are desperately searching for vaccine and, and effective medical treatments. What about the contagion of sin? What would be the remedy, the cure for the deadly infection of sin? This is what Jesus says in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Is Jesus saying, I am the divine that sin for the spiritual contagion of sin and death? Our Lord Jesus took our sins in his own body. He got himself infected and wounded for our transgressions. And he died on the cross on behalf of us and in our stead for the forgiveness of our sins. Our Lord paid the ultimate price of death for our sins. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. He broke off the chains of sin and death for us. Jesus is the divine vaccine. Amen. Love it. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, contains the interesting conversation exchanged between Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee 
a law master, a lawyer of the Jewish uh, law. He was sleepless, like sleepless in subtly. <laughs> he couldn't sleep because he had an unresolved ultimate concern over salvation. Ah, so he quietly visited Jesus at night, probably to avoid other people's watching eyes. And in the middle of the conversation, Jesus said this in John 3:14. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The background of what Jesus is saying comes from the wilderness experience of the ancient Israelites following the Exodus. When, as they walked through the wilderness, the desert, they got impatient and disobedient, questioning God's will, God's promise for them. They complain and grumble just like us during the pandemic, right? They blame God and they accuse God and Moses and saying, why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? And God was infuriated to punish them for their disobedience and rebellion. God sent poisonous serpents among them, which beat and killed many of them. The ancient Israelites got scared and terrified. They began to ask Moses to intercede for them before God. And Moses prayed on behalf of his people, and God heard their outcry. And God commanded Moses to make a serpent of bronze and put it on the palm. So whenever somebody is beaten by the point of serpent in the wilderness, that person should look at the serpent of bronze, put on the pole, and live. What Jesus was saying on the day is that just as Moses lifted up the serpent of bronze for people who are infected by the deadly uh, venom, uh, Jesus Christ himself must be lifted up on the cross. So that those who are affected and infected by deadly diseases of sin and death may look at him and live. Ah. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim. Remember? Till all the world adore his sacred name. Are we not walking in the wilderness, the parched and death? Our entire humanity is bitten by the poisonous serpent, infected by the deadly venom of sin. How can we survive? How can we help our own children, grandchildren stay alive during this time? Can we experience not just temporary resuscitation, but eternal resurrection? From where? does our help come? Our help comes from the Lord who was lifted up on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, who is lifted up to heaven. Jesus is the divine antidote for the deadly infection of sin and death. And what's more, Jesus Christ is the great physician, the Lord who heals, Jehovah Rabbi, this is what Jesus says in Mark 2.17. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, high and lift it up, and you shall live. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Uh, shall we take a time to pray together? How often we forget that Jesus is there for us throughout the whole time. Always available, sacrificing himself and offering himself as a divine vaccine for us. He came to the world as the great physician, the 
and reach out to us. Purify our soul through His precious blood shed on the cross for us. Let's pray to God. This is a personal prayer time. Have we paid attention to our faith matters? Have we secured sufficient spiritual PPE in our lives? Have we made any intentional efforts to, to protect and secure the spiritual condition and health of our family, our children, and our spouses, our church family? If we find somebody who is severely bitten and infected by the deadly virus of sin and death, have we ever led them to Jesus Christ, the divine vaccine, the divine antidote? It's time to come back to the Lord with humility and repentance, remembering that the Lord provides the healing comfort and wholeness, restoration in our body and spirit, in our family and church family, and in our nation. Desire to recommit yourself to the Lord, would you please arise? If you desire to set a godly example before your family, your child, your grandchild, your spouse, would you please arise? If you desire to receive Jesus Christ as the divine vaccine in your life and receive the eternal salvation, would you please arise? If you desperately need the presence of the Lord in your life for the challenge you're facing and struggling with desire to return to the Lord please arise Lord we turn our eyes upon you high and lifted up we give thanks to you for your ultimate sacrifice on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins we have provided divine antidote for our lives. Help us to hold on to the promise of salvation in and through you, Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to be equipped with a powerful divine armor and spiritual personal protective gear, Lord, so that we may face the giants in the battlefields, declaring the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Whenever we are bitten by the serpent, dead and venom of sin and death, help us to remember that we are always, can, we can come back to you and kneel down before you with humility and repentance, Lord. Encounter the Lord who heals, Jehovah Rafi. Allow us to experience that peace, that healing, that comfort we are desperately looking for. Thank you, Lord for being with us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Wow. I feel very united this morning. <laughs> Did not sound like a Baptist preacher this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Before the service starts, our volunteers gather together in a circle to pray together. We pray for God's blessings upon our uh, church's worship service, uh, in-person worship service and online worship person. I often ask Pastor Paul to bless us, and he is so fired up this morning. Pulled out his heart in the name of Jesus, and I was very united. It was very contagious. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. So great to see all of you. I hope and pray that you will stay healthy and safe under the protection of the Lord. Uh, following the benediction, would you please wait where you are until Osher will guide you out. And uh, here's one uh, request. 
Would you please go directly to your car without congregating on the parking lot? I know you want to talk to your friend, but for the sake of safety of each other, we are invited to just go directly to our cars. Then I will appreciate your help in that. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Remember to turn your eyes upon Jesus, high and lifted up, and you shall live. The amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the steadfast, unconditional love of God the Father, the joyful fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.